So after reading the title, I know what you're probably thinking. There goes GTA 6. Rockstar have lost their mind. You know, what happened to this great franchise? But before you get more into that train of thought, what the title suggests might actually not be a bad thing. In fact, it could be a very good thing for the future of GTA games. Now, if you are watching this when I do post it, the reason we're talking about GTA 6 all of a sudden is because Rockstar haven't given us any casino DLC information. So I figured instead of talking about that some more, let's talk about GTA 6 because something interesting came out over the last couple of weeks. This is coming from Take-Two CEO. And of course, Take-Two is the publisher. They, they basically own Rockstar. They're above Rockstar. The business decisions pretty much come from Take-Two. Not to say Rockstar doesn't have any power in their sort of business relationship, but Take-Two is the head above Rockstar. So when their CEO, Take-Two CEO, says something, it will probably impact Rockstar in some way. Now, I will leave a link to the article and the interview in the description if you want to take a look for yourself. But speaking on the topic of the length between game titles, most notably GTA and GTA 6, Strauss Zelnick, Take-Two CEO, says, I don't see it expanding further. In fact, I would expect in many instances it may compress. I think you're right in that our ability to engage with the consumers on an ongoing basis has resulted in some less pressure on getting to the market with an all new title. But we find that intersection between the time it takes our creators to do the best work in the industry on the one hand and what the consumer wants, recognizing that building anticipation is a good thing. And he also says, and we believe in resting titles as a great thing. I was a real outlier 12 years ago when we said, we don't think it makes sense to annualize non-sports titles, and now most people would agree. But I think eight years is probably too long. Of course, speaking of GTA. And then he also goes on to say, it may be possible that games may be a bit shorter than they were in certain instances. It's also possible that the ability to deliver content on an ongoing basis for a long time after an initial release of a hit would mean that perhaps that initial release wouldn't be as long in terms of number of hours of gameplay as previously had been demanded in a world where that was all you were getting. So that may be a little confusing, but basically what he's saying is that in the future, you may be seeing games where the initial, like the main game, instead of being 60 hours of content, it's only 30. However, you're going to be getting more DLCs and more online content over the next couple of years. So instead of having one game that comes out that provides 60 hours of content whenever it releases and then not having anything over the next couple of years until the next sequel comes out, you're going to have a game with 30 hours of content, just for instance, with DLCs or online content over those years to broaden or to, to compress the gap that you feel like you're waiting for that next sequel. But again, he did say eight years is too long. And he does go more in detail about, you know, what they could do and how they could shorten that time. He says something along the lines of bigger and better teams, improved development tools, Things like that could be used to make these development processes shorter. And the reason I think this is a really good thing is because, to me at least, I would much rather have a game that I could play for two, three, four years rather than a game I only play for maybe at max six months. Even though like the initial amount of content is bigger in that game I only play for a couple of months, you probably will get, end up getting a lot more content over the course of those couple of years. Now, in the comment section, let me know what are your thoughts on that. Do you like a game that just comes out, gives you everything that you need, but you may have to wait five years for the next game to come out and there's no content in between? Or would you rather a game that might have half the content initially but over those five years, you get more content, whether that is DLCs or online. 
And Take-Two also does own Gearbox, and they're putting out Borderlands 3 this year. And that's another game that took quite a long time for the sequel to come out. I mean, Borderlands 2 was released early on, I believe, in 2012. So it's been seven years for that as well. And in the case of Borderlands, normally to bridge the gap, there's DLCs. Borderlands 2 DLCs are some of my favorite DLCs of all time. And it sounds like going forward, that's what they plan on doing for Borderlands 3, releasing DLCs over the course of however many years. And then maybe for GTA and uh, Red Dead 2 or 3 or whatever, in the future, they're going to continue with the online. But because of all this, again, going back to just the, the shorter initial release you might be seeing gta 6 not as big as gta 5 or maybe even some other gta games which isn't necessarily a bad thing because there's a lot especially if the story is good there's a lot that you can do in 20 or 30 hours rather than 50 60 hours and if that does mean more content better content over the next couple of years after it releases then i i don't know i kind of i'm all for that this might also mean we get gta 6 a little sooner i mean i know a lot of people are speculating we're not going to get gta 6 until like 2022 2023 and if strauss zelnick is really trying to compress the time between titles and he says eight years is too long if they wait until 2023 that's 10 years so they definitely don't want to do that and from a business perspective, it makes a lot more sense to have titles release regularly because that just means more money incoming. And him, as the CEO of the business, he wants that to happen, obviously. So I think going forward, GTA and Red Dead games may be released sooner than we think. They may not take seven, eight, nine, ten years to release. And I am just curious if you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. Again. My thought, I think it's a good thing, but then again, that is just in theory, if they do this and they basically just sort of make the, the single player as an afterthought, then I think that's going to backfire. However, if the single player does have the same level of quality as single players in the past, even though it could be shorter, I don't think that'll be a bad thing. And one final thing. In case anyone was wondering about the relationship between Take-Two and Rockstar, this is something I thought that was just interesting to note. In the interview, the interviewer asked or started to ask if it's a lighter touch uh, that Take-Two exercises with developers like Gearbox or Rockstar. But before they could even say that, he said, I wouldn't say we have a light touch anywhere else. We just exercise our touch nicely. And sort of what I get by that is while they do, I guess, give the freedom to Gearbox and Rockstar to make their games because they know they're, they've proven themselves. If something needs to be done, like the length between titles needs to be shortened, then they'll exercise their touch nicely and they'll sort of, you know, tell these companies, tell Rockstar Gearbox, hey, look, uh, we can't take this long to release the next game. So with that being said, it's going to definitely be interesting to see how the quality of the games that come out from Take-Two, how they're compared to some of the games that have already come out. But that is something we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Please drop it a like if you did. Enjoy, subscribe for more GTA content. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.